This armed robber was given a 13-year sentence, except no one ever took him to prison. In 1999, at the age of 23, Michael Anderson was arrested for armed robbery of a Burger King and was sentenced to 13 years behind bars. But while he was out on bail, Michael and his lawyer were attempting to shorten his sentence by appealing to the judge. But after his appeals were denied, his lawyer told him to just wait at home and somebody would come arrest him. But nobody ever did. Cornelius was waiting at his house to be brought to jail for days weeks, then months, and then years. So he decided to turn his life around. He left all of his old friends, joined a church, started a construction business, got married, and had kids. But in 2013, 13 years after he was convicted, the state figured out what had happened and they arrested him. But after they discovered that he had turned his life around, the government said, hey, that's our bad, you're free to go. I'm the most feared person of the Netherlands. Hi, my name is Ridwan Tagi. Let me tell you how I became the most feared person of the Netherlands. In my early teen years, I joined a youth gang called the Bad Boys. That's when I also received my first jail sentence for burglaries and procession of weapons. I went under the radar for 21 years after that arrest and remained out of the police's sight. In the meantime, I've built myself a real imperium from drug money. They estimated that I've earned more than 500 million euros, but that's an insult to my real earnings. I accidentally appeared on the police's radar when somebody hacked a phone and saw my name pop up. Then everything went downwards. When key witnesses that I saw as friends turned against me, I had to do some brutal things. Everyone who was against, I wanted gone. I had several crime reporters and even a lawyer killed. When they arrested me in 2019, they thought it was over for me. But they were wrong. I still have so much power that the daughter of the king in the Netherlands is hiding. And I'm sure I won't be in jail for a long time because I already have made some great plans. The youngest person ever on the most wanted list. My name is Rita, and you may know my story a bit from the movie Mokro Mafia, where the character named Mouse is based on me. Let me tell you how I went from a little street kid to one of the most ruthless gangster from the Netherlands to being killed at 21 years old. When I was younger, I stabbed a lot of people because I'm really small. I couldn't survive with my fist, therefore, I carried a knife with me all the time. But I exchanged this knife for a gun really soon. My first shooting was right outside my own house. I was angry, went upstairs, grabbed the gun and shot the victim in his leg. Not even six months later I was about to do my first robbery. A jewelry store. It didn't go according the plan and we had to get away. During this I managed to shoot at the store owner and shoot at the police too. I made the headlines with this. My face was everywhere on the TV and my money was running low. That's when I was recruited by the big boys. I had to wipe someone away from the earth. How many people I've exactly wiped away isn't very no, although people are saying at least six people. As you could expect, I couldn't maintain this life for very long. I was shot at 21 and didn't see the next day. Don't forget to like and follow who do you want to see next. The case is still new. Discovering facts. Just incomprehensible cruelty. The father that stands before you lined up his three young boys and he executed them in his own home with a rifle. They were ages three, four, and seven, Judge. In an act of desperation to save her children, the mother at some point grabbed the gun. The father of boys was able to flee and to a field near the home. And again, we know from his admission, father hunted that boy down, drug him back to the property, and executed him in front of witnesses. The mother was shot through the hand in her attempt to protect her children. To just begin to imagine their fear. This was the man that every day they woke up looking to for protection, love, guidance in all things. The man they trust more than any other person on earth. The person they rely upon to keep them safe from harm. He was their world, he was their guardian, and he executed them in cold blood. We know that from his admission. <clears throat> One of the most monstrous, craven, cowardly acts that will ever be our misfortune to see. To make things even more disturbing, Judge, this was no haphazard act. Again, by his own admission, 
he planned the acting on a whim. He's confessed to what I believe is the worst crime, at least I hope, that I'll see in my lifetime. I hope it's the worst fact pattern that ever comes before this court. Judge. Their true crime story of how they were caught. In Lubbock, Texas, a man noticed a suitcase while working at the landfill. He decided to open it up and saw a body in the fetal position. She appeared to be badly bruised and beaten, and she had a tattoo of the name Summer on her ankle. Police would determine the cause of death was asphyxiation, and they found through fingerprint records her name was Summer Lee Baldwin. The suitcase did not contain fingerprints, but police were able to find a tag and contact the manufacturing company who said that this suitcase was only sold in Walmart stores. The UPC on the bag tracked to a specific Walmart store which showed a man at about 3 a.m. on the day of the crime purchasing the bag along with some latex gloves. Credit card was used in the purchase which came back to a man named Rosindo Rodriguez. They tracked his card to a gas station which happened to be near a Holiday Inn that he stayed. Police would go into his hotel room and find blood on the carpet, the box spring, and the sheets. Police also found a trash can in the hallway that contained a Walmart bag and latex gloves in that bag. Police found him taking a selfie of him getting onto a bus back to San Antonio and cell phone records showing him going back to his family's home there. Latex gloves police found had Summer's DNA on the outside and on the inside had his DNA along with her DNA. He would deny involvement and police would search his computer and find something even more sinister. Police found the suspect was in online communication with Summer and had also been searching news articles about the woman. Furthermore, police uncovered communication online between him and a 16-year-old girl named Joanna Rogers. Police were now suspecting that the suspect was involved in another crime with another woman. Joanna had disappeared 18 months earlier and had left her phone, keys, clothes behind and had just disappeared. Phone records would show Rosindo making a phone to the family's landline the night of that crime. Police learned that the family's trash went to the same landfill as the first victim, so they started organizing a search to search it. After several months of searching, a backhoe would uncover another suitcase which would contain Joanna's body. Mental records would confirm the identity identity of Joanna. or DNA from Summer's rape kit would come back to Rescindo. Rescindo was sentenced to death in Texas and executed, and that was how he was caught. Hey. Hey, Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, so, sir. I guess we got a little business to discuss. Yeah. Uh, you know, Carlos kind of told me a little bit about what was going on, but why don't you go ahead and tell me what, you know, what's um, up. Well, not entirely sure. I've been like, I don't know if the fence, like I know I want it done. I'm just trying to figure out the when I want it done. It has to be on a Thursday because that's the day that I work. But, well, actually it could be on a Thursday, Friday, or Saturday now since Carlos isn't working. Um, he already told you how much, right? He said you mentioned 50. Mm -hmm. Okay, how, how, how are you going to how are you gonna work that? That's part? what I was wondering because with Carlos, I was just going to give him like, eight or nine grand like every few weeks because um that way it's like under 10 and everything and all that crap so i don't know how you want to work that one well out. i mean i would prefer to have something you know at the beginning to see to well, make the sure only, that you're uh, the only you're problem with that is i can't i don't have it until because it's all his life insurance gotcha. so well uh, carlos said you know i mean how do you want it how do you want it done I mean, he mentioned a couple different things to me um uh, so if it looked like a robbery, a shot or something first, yeah. Or well, like, yeah, we were talking about else. insulin. Okay. Um, but you want it to look like a breaking, mm -hmm. something but, breaking in. Well, we were talking about that too, and Carlos was like, "Oh, well, since I know him, I might be able to get him outside." I have a girlfriend who wants to move in with me, and I don't want her to be scared to move in with me. And she th if she thinks that we got broken into, and then Jake got, you know, yeah, that probably she wouldn't want to move in. Yeah, now. so I'm kind of afraid of that because I want her to move in with me because okay. I don't want to live there by myself afterwards. Well, you tell me how you want it done. Um, I mean, I don't know what Carlos told me told you about me, but I mean, I, I've, I've done a couple of things like this before, and uh, I mean, I'll get it done, and I just need to know what you want done. I mean, um, you know, I mean, how, I mean, I can do it any way you want me to, <laughs> but I just want to know how you want it done. Really, whatever's easiest. If you can get him outside, that would be great. Okay. But I mean, if you absolutely can't, I will. I will understand. You know. So you want me to like to. I guess I, I guess I don't. I, I'm not understanding you. 
you so you don't you don't want it done in the house then? Because it would it would be messy in the house. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, do you have any cash laying around that you can kind of, kind of give me like a little down payment, right? Yeah, gotcha. I I can give you, uh, I can give you a hundred tomorrow. Well, whatever you got there, just something to show me that you're serious about this. Okay, bring that with you tomorrow. Okay, time frame though. Um, can it be either not this week? Can it be a week or two from now? Well, you tell me. It can be any time you want. <laughs> I, I thought you were in a hurry. <laughs> I was looking know? at the at my calendar and I was thinking either the 18th of April. Or the 25th. So, Thursdays. Yeah, Thursdays. Well, Thursdays. Not this Thursday, but the following Thursday, the, the 18th. 18th. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I can, you know. It'd be better if you surprise me, either okay. the 18th or the 25th. Okay. I won't tell you what it's going to be, but, Perfect. you know, and, um, and I won't tell you, uh, you know, I mean, the less Anything you know, the better, it. too. That's why I said surprise okay. me with how you do it. Okay. Because, I mean, the more shocked I am when it happens, okay. the better it will You be. don't want them to suffer, so I'll make no, it quick and not. clean. Perfect. Okay. I'll make it quick and clean. And uh, I'll just take those things you put on the list, and it's going to be quick in and out. You know, I'll get the key back to you later. And, uh, I just want to make it as as non-suspicious. When do you as anticipate getting your insurance policy? I don't know. From one of my one of my buddies told me that um, his guy friend, his girlfriend, was his insurance beneficiary, and the guy was murdered, and she got it relatively quickly. He didn't give me a time frame, but she got it quickly so, because I mean, she was implicated. So, I mean, we're not going to stretch this out for a year, right? No, like I, it, it shouldn't be, happens, it shouldn't be longer uh, than that. Okay. Uh, all right, so you know what you're going to bring tomorrow? Yes, I want, you're going to bring, blah, I'm going to bring house plan map to get up to the room where he's going to hang out, a picture of him, a list of the things you want taken, and a down payment. Yep. Right. We good? Yep. All good. right. Thank you very much. I'll see you tomorrow. Yep, you got my number if anything I do. changes. Thank you. Uh, Hello? What happened? Police. I don't know. This house is big. I don't know where my little cousin is. So can you please? Where is the three-month-old baby? Ba the baby lady. The baby is on my mama's kitchen counter with his head smashed. Now, I need you to please send me. Okay, is it a male or a female? I don't know where my little cousin is at. Now, if I go a girl pop up with a weapon, I'm not going to have a little cousin no more. So can you please? I know, I know it's hard to talk. Can you please just send the police? As disturbing as this find was, there was something even more terrifying lurking nearby. The killer was hiding somewhere in the house. Look, is the baby breathing? Listen, lady, the baby is deceased. Okay, okay. Is, All right, we're sending the police and an ambulance, right. okay? Uh, mama. What is her name, sir? Mama. Son. Hello. What is your name? I'm Robert Stewart. 20 year old DeAsia Watkins and her boyfriend James Brown welcomed their healthy baby girl, Janaya Watkins, on December 4th, 2014. At first, everything seemed to be going well for the couple. DeAsia was excited to become a mother, and after a tough childhood of her own, she vowed to give her child the love she'd never received. But no one would have ever predicted the sheer horror that lay ahead. It all began when Cheviot police were dispatched to the apartment where the family was living on January 25th, 2015, around midnight. Upon hearing DeAsia's screams and baby Janiah's cries, multiple neighbors had become very concerned and placed 911 calls. Police soon arrived at the residence. However, DeAsia refused to open the door. When officers threatened to force entry into the apartment, a young man opened the door who was soon determined to be James' cousin, Chris Gully. Right away, members of law enforcement detected a strong odor of marijuana and noted DeAsia's behavior seemed erratic. According to official case notes, as an officer tried to take Janaya out of DeAsia's arms in fear for the baby's safety, DeAsia allegedly attempted to choke Janaya, who was only a mere seven weeks of age. EMTs were called to the scene to perform welfare checks on both DeAsia and Janaya. They eventually managed to take Janaya, and DeAsia immediately passed out on the floor, though the cause of her having lost consciousness is unknown. She was soon moved to Deaconess Hospital for psychiatric care, where she would remain on a 72-hour investigative hold. By the following day, her diagnosis had been established. She was suffering from postpartum psychosis. In addition, marijuana was found in her system, though she denied using it initially. She was placed on an antipsychotic medication. Due to side effects associated with the medication, 
Deasia was informed that she would have to discontinue nursing Janiah. And based on Deasia's behavior, staff expressed concern to the caseworker that Deasia didn't seem to be grasping the seriousness of the situation. According to case notes, they felt that she was minimizing the incident as she described it as no big deal. By January 30th, DeAsia had returned to the apartment and a safety plan was officially in place. She was allowed supervised contact with Janaya, provided DeAsia took her prescribed medication and that either James or his sister Jolisha was present at all times. But a visit from the caseworker reinforced the fact that DeAsia wasn't on board with the plan. She hadn't filled the prescription for her antipsychotic medication. The caseworker reiterated that it was imperative DeAsia take her medication or it wouldn't be safe for Janiah to stay in the home. James made it clear that she'd have to leave the home if she didn't comply, as the apartment lease was allegedly under his name. DeAsia reluctantly agreed. She didn't want to be separated from Janiah, and in addition, she felt she had nowhere else to go. Of course, soon these concerns would no longer be relevant, as disaster was lurking just around the corner. One week later, a caseworker completed an unannounced visit at the residence and was unable to verify if DeAsia had filled her prescription. Over the next couple of weeks, everything continued to deteriorate. By the end of February, DeAsia had abandoned the apartment and moved in with an aunt. It was clear that the current situation wasn't working and it was about to become exponentially worse. Custody proceedings began on March 6th. As paternity had not been established and a mental health assessment needed to be completed on DeAsia, the magistrate who presided over the hearing granted custody to the Hamilton County Department of Job and Family Services. During the interim, Janaya was placed in the care of Deborah Stewart, DeAsia's aunt. Neither James nor DeAsia were allowed to see Janaya, and Deborah agreed to the terms. During the caseworker's visit to her home, she confirmed that she'd not allowed DeAsia contact with Janaya. She was adhering to the agreement, and baby Janaya was thriving. But in actuality, things weren't at all as they appeared to be, nor as Deborah claimed them to be. You see, DeAsia had been spending time with Janaya, a lot of time actually. She'd moved into Deborah's home days earlier. Deborah was coping with her own personal issues and health problems. Caring for a baby on her own was just too much to handle. So Deborah allowed DeAsia to stay, despite the fact that she'd explicitly agreed not to allow her contact with Janaya. Three days after the caseworker's visit, a life came to a shockingly brutal end within the confines of Deborah's walls. A dispatcher received the frantic 911 call early that morning. Sunshine, I want to rotate off of your emergency. Somebody please send the police. Please. Oh what is God, the address? With her admission, less than 40 minutes into the interview, the denials cease. The ugly truth has finally been exposed. But it seems there's likely more to how this all came about. You recall the incident where the police were dispatched to the apartment as a result of cries and screams coming from within that night in late January. Well, as it turns out, it wasn't the first foreboding episode that had occurred within those walls. James shared some disturbing details with the caseworker at that initial meeting, shortly after DeAsia had been taken off to the hospital for an evaluation. The beginning of 2015, which marked Janiah's first month, brought along with it some changes in DeAsia. According to James, she began speaking regularly about religion. While that in itself wasn't a cause for alarm, it was out of character for DeAsia. Her unsettling behavior included claims that demons were present. There were times she'd be fine one moment, then uncontrollably crying the next. James had managed to capture the audio of one such occurrence as he clutched Janiya in his arms, unsure of what else to do. He played the recording for the screener, 
and a hysterical deasia could be heard screaming, Why God? Why me? What did I do wrong? Who are these demons? Please stop it. According to James, the incident, not unlike the one that occurred just hours earlier, was unprovoked and completely unexpected. That said, Deasia is now about to reveal her version of the slaying that ensued just days earlier, and she's poised to divulge every last nauseating detail. Please be advised that the following segment may be too graphic for some viewers. Deasia starts at the beginning. I took Janaya. So I changed my library. <laughs> he said, scream and I'm And then I didn't get the changer. So I just threw across the room. He didn't die. So I walked over there. I picked her up and banged her head and it looked so four times. Then I figured she was dying in. He clipped the little big old stick and hit her in the head. How many times did you cut to get her neck severed? Until it's sliced off. So once you started stabbing her, what made you think you needed to cut her head off after that? She wouldn't die. She wouldn't die? How do you know she wasn't dead? Because she kept breathing. And she kept what? Breathing and moving around. She kept breathing and moving around? Yeah. Even after you were stabbing her? Yes. What did you do with the knife after that? Put it in her hand. Was there a reason that you did that? Yes. Why did you put it in her hand? Because it looked like she did it. So it would look like she did it? Yes. And then what did you do? I went back on. Deasia's revolting account is consistent with the evidence found at the scene. What made you do that? I don't know. You don't know? No. Do you regret what you did? Do you feel bad about what you did to Janiah? Yeah. No. Why don't you feel bad? Just don't. Do you blame Janaya for something? No. What made you want to kill her? Um, I don't know. Do you think you could have just given her to James instead? Yes. I get in contact with him. Couldn't get in contact with him? No. Yeah. How long before Robert showed up? A good 15. I'm sorry? A good 15. 15 minutes? Yes. Did you hear the little kids scream when they came in? They didn't even scream. The little girl said, the baby. So you, were, you heard all that? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. After catching a glimpse of baby Janaya in such an utterly brutalized state, Robert had to divert his eyes. What, what, what do you see when you look at the child? What do you look, 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 lady, I don't want to describe the scene. This scream is very, very bad. All right. The little lady, the little baby head is open like okay. open open I, I'm, I'm not going in there to touch nothing because i don't want to mess nothing up i'm not going in there to look because i already seen it but it's not it's very violent it's a very violent thing uh, we're gonna step out for a minute okay were you able to tell anyone else about this no okay we'll be back in a minute okay okay would you like something to drink or anything no water or something no. Detectives exit the room and don't return for any additional questioning. Less than 15 minutes later, DeAsia is headed for the Justice Center. DeAsia's account confirmed the Hamilton County Coroner's report. Baby Janiah had sustained stab wounds on both her face and head. When the coroner was asked if she could provide the number of stab wounds, she stated that she'd lost count. Janiah's right arm was fractured. In addition, her head had indeed been severed from her body, as DeAsia so callously described. According to the Hamilton County Prosecutor, Job and Family Services did their job. Nevertheless, the haunting case is one you likely can't wrap your head around, and the question of why really wasn't answered, at least not completely. 
Deasia's initial plea in response to her aggravated murder charge was not guilty by reason of insanity, but the presiding judge ordered that she receive psychiatric treatment. It was later determined that she was competent to stand trial upon receiving the required treatment. However, a trial date never came. Deasia Watkins pleaded guilty to the brutal murder of her own infant in February of 2017. She received a sentence of 15 years to life in prison with the possibility of parole at 13 years as she was given credit for the time she'd already spent in custody. Mom, can you just pass my drink that's on the table, please? Thanks. A horrifying piece of CCTV footage, a man tries to abduct a barista through the drive through window. Washington State Police have released this clip that occurred on Monday at around 5am of a man in his car trying to pull the barista out of the drive through window into his car whilst he's holding a zip tie device. She's seen just handling cash before he literally lurches out of the window and grabs her wrist and the other hand has a zip tie. Thankfully, she managed to escape before he just sped off. Despite the terrifying nature of the crime, thankfully, due to the publication of the CCTV, police received loads of tips and actually arrested a suspect on Tuesday morning. The giveaway for the alleged suspect was actually the tattoo which spelled Chevrolet. Not a very common tattoo, but led to a lot of people phoning in and even giving a name. Thank goodness she managed to get away. That is not okay. Hey there. Hello. How are you? All right. Just all right? Uh, yeah. Good. Okay. Should you have lessons? There's a wall right there between your legs. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was a little bit nervous. So was I, the way you're driving? Huh? I said... You mentioned that you were nervous? Right, I was nervous while I was behind you driving down I-40. You were in lane number one, at times, you went all the way from lane number one, all the way over, didn't you a signal? Had problems keeping the, your, 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 your vehicle one lane. And then when you merge on from uh, westbound 40 to northbound 25, you took that curve way too fast. I did. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I thought apologize. you were going to crash. No, I don't. I didn't say. I don't think so. I'm just saying I thought you were going to crash. Okay, and then you have a bunch of kids, and then the car, how many kids? You have one, two, three, four, five, six. Who are these kids to you? Uh, this is just my friend. That's your friend? Yeah. How old's your friend? 18. That girl's not 18? Huh? That girl's not 18? Yeah. No, she's not. No, I don't think she is. That girl's not 18, trust me. She don't look 18. Ma'am, how old are you? I didn't ask you your name, I asked you how old, uh, how old you were. Jeremy, turn the car off and come back here and talk to me. All right. Let me see the keys. Thank you. Come on out. Why's your, why, why's your zipper, your buttons down in your crotch? <laughs> well, I probably just forgot. Okay. Come back here. Come, come back here with me, Jeremy. Right here. 
I am. I'll button my zipper. Right? Yeah, please button your zipper. Yeah. I mean, I had to. I had to take it like a, a piss and. Um, Good? I'm good. Okay. Jeremy, how much you had to drink tonight? I haven't had anything to drink. Okay, I'm going to ask you again. Okay, you can barely stand still. Your speech is slurred. I've never heard you speak. You have a strong odor of, of, of an alcoholic beverage admitting for keeping your pockets. Uh, yeah, but you, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you actually have an overwhelming odor of an alcoholic beverage emitting from your breath. I know I haven't been drinking. So how much have you been drinking? Based on your driving, you're driving like, like a total idiot. How much have you had to drink? I messed up. Gotcha. And I did. Because. But I haven't been drinking. Can you explain why I can smell from your breath every time you breathe and talk to me? The. What is that? Can you explain to me why I can smell the strong odor of an alcoholic beverage and from your breath every time you breathe and talk to me? Explain that odor. Well, I don't even know. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, I haven't had anything to, to drink. When did you last drink? Like, probably, um, it's been, a, it's been a little while. Like an hour? I would say it's more than an yeah, Like more maybe than, two? Yeah. R roughly? Okay. Like two hours. That's fair. Because you know what? Two hours is totally is, is totally different than, no, I haven't been drinking. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I mean, that's uh, okay. No, that's okay. We're not, we're not going to argue I about mean, it. Uh, I mean, I know what I smell. I know what I hear. I know what I see. Okay? Simple as that. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. Well, you already did. You said I haven't been drinking. And then I kind of played you, said, was it an hour ago? Like, no, longer. Two hours? Yeah. It's been a few hours. Okay. I mean... Uh, gotcha. Well, I mean, we're not going to argue about that. I mean, I know what I smell. Okay? Do you think you're safe to drive? Do you think you're safe to drive? Yeah. You do? Absolutely. Once again, you and I will disagree on that, too. I don't think you're safe to drive. Just based, on, just based on, on, on how you're driving. All over I-40, again, going way too fast around that curve, okay? Just stand right here, in front of my car. All those people in the car, who are they? They're just my friends, I, don't, I mean. Do you normally hang out with people who, who are young? Not. Not, how, uh, how old are you? I'm 41. 41, okay. Hang tight right there, okay? Okay. I, come out. I don't want you to follow. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How old are you? And don't lie to me. I'm okay, like, I'm not going to play this, the game where you lie. I know that, I, I know that you're not 18, okay? okay? So if you want to have attitude, you in the front, okay? We go about it another way. Simple as that. So if, so if I sense any attitude or you give me lip, we'll do it another way. How old are you? Just your age. That's all I need is your age. Cool. Then I guess what? Everybody goes to juvie. Simple as that. I can, I can, I can, I can care less who you are. I will, I'll, I'll book all six of you guys under, under Jane or John Doe. Simple as that. Is that, is that what you guys are? Right now, right now, you guys aren't in trouble. It's, you guys aren't in trouble right now. What's that? Okay, how old are you? 14. 14, thank you. Simple, simple question. 14. Four, really 14? Yes, sir. Okay. 14. Okay. 13. Okay. 13, okay. 14? Okay, who is this guy to anybody? Uh, that's our homies. And then she knows his kid. Okay. So, 